G'day, welcome to Down to Woodworks. In today's video, I'm gonna be building just a couple of simple shaker style boxes that will match our um, TV unit. And the boxes are gonna go either side of that TV unit. One's gonna be shoe storage, and the other one's gonna be a planter box. This project starts with breaking down a large sheet of 9mm MDF into smaller, more manageable pieces that I can then take to the table saw to cut down further. There's eight main pieces for these two boxes, roughly 500mm square, and the leftover is cut down to narrower strips that'll make up the rail and style profile of these boxes. You'll have to excuse the shaky video here. I didn't realise this until editing time, which was obviously too late to reshoot. It's not unusual to get burn marks when ripping larger pieces of MDF on the table saw, but these are quickly removed with the jointer. Here I'm ripping the narrow strips that'll be the faux rail and style. This shot shows the construction of the boxes and how the sides will fit together. I figured this interlocking joint would be much stronger than a straight butt joint. And because this is a paint grade finish, it didn't warrant mitering the corners. Doing the joint this way also meant that on the sides, there would only be one seam rather than two. So to get the correct overlap for the styles, I used a strip of the 9mm MDF in the vise as a spacer and then butted up the side panel to it, clamping it in place. The style piece was then glued and pinned in place with its front edge flush with the spacer. I used the same method to glue and nail the two outside styles on all eight side panels. With the styles done, I then cut and fitted the rails. A great way to fill small nail holes and gaps in your work is to put down a small amount of glue and then by sanding, you fill in those holes and gaps with sawdust that matches perfectly. Time to start assembly of the boxes, but I didn't put much thought into how I was going to do that. And the way I started out proved to be a bit awkward, but a few clamps helped out a lot. After I glued and nailed these two panels together, I got distracted and forgot to clamp some gluing squares into the corner. 
and they set slightly out of square as you can see here with the base fixed to one of the side panels. No big deal though, it was easily squared up with some glue and nails fixed through the base. The remaining two sides went together perfectly, completing the basic box construction. For the second box, I changed my assembly method, which made it a little easier. I never thought the wooden jack would ever get used again after I retired it. Next, I made some feet for the boxes using scraps of 9mm MDF cut into squares and glued and screwed into each corner of the boxes. The feet also provided a flat surface for fixing the moulding around the base. The moulding I used was standard 65mm MDF skirting board, which I ripped down to about 43mm in height and then mitered at each end. I used two adjacent pieces of moulding to line up one corner and then taped one of them in place and ruled a line. I then cut the tape and used that mark to line up the piece for gluing and nailing. Another way to do this would have been to clamp the second piece in place and use it to line up the first. Can't get better than that. With that first piece in place, it was just a matter of working around the base of the box, cutting and fixing each piece by referencing off the adjacent length installed before it. With the base moulding done, I put one of the boxes in place so my wife could get a sense of its size and scale and she was very happy. I then gave the boxes another once over, filling in any nail holes and small gaps. I finished off the top of the boxes with some more moulding, but this one was a smaller profile. This moulding had a rebate on the back, so I used a couple of spaces on my miter sled to keep the moulding vertical. Once again, to mark and cut the first piece of moulding, I used a second piece to line up the mitre on one corner. And then using a knife, I marked the other end of the moulding for cutting. Then it was just a matter of lining up the knife mark with the kerf in my mitre sled and cutting it to length. I didn't video the top moulding being installed because it was just the same process as the base moulding. But once that was done, the boxes were sprayed with an undercoat sealer. The last thing to make before painting was a simple lid for the shoe box. I cut the size of this piece of coated chipboard I had and edge banded it with 3mm MDF. Then gave it a good sanding so the paint would stick to the coating. This lid won't be hinged, it'll just be sitting in place 
and it'll have a simple handle towards the front edge, uh, which I haven't decided upon yet. And that'll be just so you can lift the lid and access the box. The paint I used was Rust-Oleum chalk paint in charcoal, which matches the TV unit. This paint is the easiest paint to spray that I've ever used. The beauty about this paint is that it can be finished in lots of different ways. It can be left ultra flat, it can be distressed to give an aged look, it can be waxed, or my favourite, finished with satin poly. Well, that's another project out of the way, so I'm pretty happy with that. The boxes look pretty good. I think they match the TV unit quite well. And as I said in the beginning, they are fairly simple to make. These boxes would make a great uh, DIY weekend project, and you could even change up the styling a little bit to suit your own decor. They're cheap, easy, and simple to make. And if you're making them paint grade like I did, then they can be very forgiving. Well, that's it. It's time to get started on the next project. I'm not quite sure what that is at the moment. But if you do want to know what I'm up to in between videos, make sure you follow me on Instagram. But until the next one, you guys all have a great day.